you guys, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to Little Green Farmhouse. If you're watching um, some of my most recent videos that are going up and saying, does she wear the same outfit every day? Um, well, no, I don't, but I am filming several videos today. So um, anyway, today we're gonna talk about the garden, my garden, in May. Um, this is super exciting for me because I have only lived in this house, in this area, for what, seven months? Almost eight months. And so in my other house that we lived in for eight years, it was in the city of Flagstaff, Arizona, at an elevation of 7,000 feet. And I mean, people think of Arizona as being the desert and half of it is, or actually about two thirds of it is desert. And then there's high desert. And then, and then there's a good portion of it that is not desert at all. Flagstaff was part of that. Um, we got 100 inches of snow every year. Yes, Arizona, 100 inches of snow. But it also meant that we had a really short growing season, just 103 days from the middle of June to the middle of September, and that was it. So um, gardening there was very different from gardening here. And so the fact that I actually even have anything to show you in May is just exciting for me because in the past what I would be doing is taking you out to say, here's my garden in May, everything's dead. There's nothing for you to see and I'm getting ready to plant some things. So um, anyway, without further ado, let me go ahead and show you my new garden. All right, so here's my garden. Um, the bag of soil that's out in the middle right there, that one is there because it's, um, it, I have to continue to add soil to my potato bags and buckets and so soon that will be empty and it will be gone. Sorry about my hose laying there. I was lazy. Um, and also just to kind of point out, this is a wall of water. These are walls of water. Um, they're kind of a pain in the butt to fill. Um, but at this point in the summer, well summer, it's May. Um, when the weather is warm, what I use walls of water for is to prevent the sun from blasting transplanted pl uh, plants. And so I'm not sure if I'm going to need these, probably not, but rather than dump them out and have to refill them again, I just took them off the places where I had them and moved them to the side. Okay, like I said, I have some buckets and some bags and those have potatoes. As the potato plants start to grow, you add more dirt, and then as they continue to grow, you add more dirt until there's dirt all the way up to the top of the bucket, and then at that point, there should be potatoes that are um, in layers through the whole bucket, and if you're interested in more about that, you can watch the video that I have linked below about growing potatoes in buckets. Okay, over here I have asparagus along the edge. Uh, one of my new plants gave me one piece of asparagus this summer, or in the spring, and then this one has been here, this one we inherited. And so we got quite a few pieces of asparagus from this, but the problem with only having one asparagus plant is that while it may be sending up shoots for you to eat, you don't really have enough to make a serving. And so it will be nice when these guys um, mature. So probably next year um, or the year after that, they'll start to produce pretty consistently. Those are artichokes and they're growing pretty large. I realized that artichokes will give about 25 to 50 actual artichokes per plant. And I have so many artichoke plants um, planted. I had no idea they produced that much, but I love artichoke hearts. My husband and I both love artichoke hearts. And so I will probably do some serious canning. The other thing is they're perennial, so they will come back. This garden right here is very lame. Um, this is the, the last thing I put in were my peppers because peppers are very sensitive to weather. Um, I was growing these inside in my arrow garden. I have a jalapeno back here. I have um, an ancho here and a cayenne. I had a red pepper planted there and something just cut it off like a cutworm or something. Just, just absolutely cut the stem off. So I replanted with seed. This space I have planted um, um, habaneros, just kind of a mix, and I have um, a few pieces of garlic in here and then some Swiss chard that's just starting to grow. You'll notice that I tucked in garlic and onions in different places, and I did that because garlic and onions are supposed to keep pests away, probably because of the strong odor 
they have. So the plants that are growing along the the fence part here, you'll notice them all the way down. Those are hops plants. My husband has always wanted to grow hops. They're really beautiful vines, um, and he does not want to make his own beer, but he does want to trade hops to somebody who does. So anyway, um, okay, so we're coming over here to the squash, and we have a loofah plant that will climb on this. Um, there are two watermelon plants and a uh, Armenian cucumber. Over here I have a horned melon. It's kind of taken its time getting started. Uh, two butternut squashes. This one um, actually died um, when, it, when it was a seedling and then I had to replant. So it's, it's just starting to get going. Um, I already went through a whole batch of greens and so I'm starting to replant. So I have spinach there, a patty pan, two zucchini, two spaghetti squash, a pumpkin, an acorn squash, two cucumbers. Then over here, oh, and see, Chad loves getting in this particular garden because these little white moths love to live in here and he likes to chase them. So he, he dives into the kohlrabi and um, gets the moths flying around. So he's figured that out. So kohlrabi, which is a, it's not, it's not a root vegetable. Um, it's got a little, knobby sort of a thing at the base of the plant that you eat and it's kind of like a mix between a turnip and a potato. Uh, radishes, I have already been harvesting tons. I've pulled most of them out and put more seeds in there. Those have been going crazy. I have broccoli, I have carrots, snap peas, red onions. That's a uh, soy plant specifically for edamame. More Swiss chard. Over here, you can see the onions that are tucked in. I have dry beans over here. They're called cattle beans. These are green bush beans. Trying to get some tomatillos to grow. Here, I just planted those seeds the other day. Um, garlic back here, more onions, a couple more artichokes. There's my cat, Chad. And um, here is a white tomato plant. They're, they're really kind of cool. They're, they're not actually white tomatoes. They're sort of a light, 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 light yellow. More potatoes here. Okay, now we're coming over to where I have tucked in some greens. You can see the lettuce. I come out in the mornings and I harvest the lettuce. Um, I have brandywine tomatoes. I have, um, a, there's a golden pear cherry tomato, another white tomato, a burdock. Uh, two green tomatoes, which are called Aunt Ruby. Um, I have San Marzano's. There's a little bit of spinach left over. I have a tomato berry. One that's I think is called Flamme, F-L-A-M-M-E. -M -M -E. And then this one is a black crim. And that's it. Now my, my uh, Flamme has some little tomatoes on it. So that's kind of cool. And so does my tomato berry. Or not, that's not a tomato berry. It's a cherry tomato. And so that has some that are kind of, I don't know if you can see them, but they're tucked in there. The rest of them have um, gotten blossoms, but not, um, but not any tomatoes yet. So as you can see, things are going really well in the garden. Um, I, can't, I can't believe that we're um, only, gosh, getting to the end of May and... I'm already harvesting things out of my garden because as many of you know, I lived in a very cold climate before and we would not even be starting our growing season until the middle of June. So, you know, like three more weeks before we could do that. And so all of this stuff is just going crazy. So that's it, you guys. Um, I'm super excited for things to start coming along. You know, I can't wait to try those tomatoes and to have them ripen up, to have my other ones start producing. If you're wondering why in the world are you growing so much stuff? I mean, I have no children. It's just my husband and I living at home. But really, I like to do food storage. I like to can. And so I'm growing 13 tomato plants because, is that right, 13, I think? Um, I'm growing 13 tomato plants because my intention is to make salsa and can it, to make pasta sauce and can it, to make diced tomatoes, just plain diced tomatoes and can them. Um, and that way then I take the wonderful fresh flavors of summer and carry them into the winter. Because when you buy a tomato at the grocery store in the winter, it just tastes like nothing. It's just kind of pulpy and you know what I'm talking about. So I 
almost never buy a fresh tomato at the grocery store in the winter. Um, I will stick to either sun-dried tomatoes. That's another thing I do for food storage is I will make sun-dried tomatoes that are actually made in the oven. Um, I'll show you. I'll do a recipe for that. Um, I had some. I had a recipe uh, in a video that I showed you on my other channel, My Flagstaff Home, for when I lived there. But I'll do another one um, while we live here. And so anyway, um, but anyway, in the winter time, I will tend to stick to canned tomatoes or. Um, sun-dried tomatoes just because regular tomatoes taste horrible. So anyway, the same goes with all that squash and with all the potatoes I'm growing, all this kind of stuff. My plan is to do some different methods of food storage, which I will share with you as we go along with the summer too. So I hope you enjoyed seeing my garden. I will be back toward the end of June to show you how we are moving along. That will be at a time where it's getting pretty darn hot here. So it'll be interesting to see what is continuing to move along and grow and what sort of seems like maybe it wants to take a break for the hotter months. I don't know. It's the first summer I've ever lived here. So I hope you will join me for those videos. Um, if you are not a current subscriber to Little Green Farmhouse, just hit that button right there. YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos, which is several times a week, and I hope I will see you again. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.